guests that are here today. Good to see you, good to see you. I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you. Thank you for being here with us today. Sister Eva, sister of Sister Threes, and we're just thankful for her and the guest is with her as well. I want to give some shout outs this morning to all of you who helped to participate in the distribution of the Thanksgiving boxes this past week. Amen. I got the report, I got the report that on both occasions, and I'm talking about the distribution that took place here at St. Mark this past Tuesday. Apparently somebody got the message. They they were here on time because they, they heard me say last week, don't be late. Because if you're late, I, I might haul all of it off. I understand we had a, a good time on Tuesday night. The participation was great, and we were able to serve a lot of people here at St. Mark. St. Mark, you were served on Tuesday night. Upwards of 40 boxes were distributed. Upwards of 40 boxes were distributed. And then on yesterday, we are affiliated with an initiative called Unity in Community. Unity in the Community, I think it consists of four churches. Truly was the host church, five churches. Truly was the host church yesterday. Of course, St. Mark, yours truly, we, we are part of that initiative as well. And we serve the community on yeah. yesterday. Let's give a lot of hands. The report was not provided on yesterday on how many families that we served, but it was supposed to be upwards of 50. Right. Upwards of 50 56. families. Six, 56. 56. 56. 56 families were served on yesterday in the community. So we served St. Mark on Tuesday night, and then we served the community on yesterday. And that's what it's about, St. Mark. That's what it's about. And we want to thank all of those who played their part from the beginning to the end on that initiative. You know, that's why partnership is important. Amen. You know, partnership is important because when you have the right partnership, you have leverage. I wish I had a witness in the house today. When you have the right partnership, you have leverage because what each party can't do on their own, yes, through partnership, we can do together. Yes. I think we ought to give God a hand. So we want to thank all of our partners. We want to thank all of our partners, the churches that are part of Unity and Community. We want to thank the uh, North Texas Food Bank and any other partners that we have. Thank all of our partners for helping us to make these two events as successful as they were. And I was even handed a thank you card on my way in today, St. Mark. There was a family that we served on Tuesday night that really wasn't a member of the church. And see, that's how we that's how we run at St. Mark. That's how we roll at St. Mark. Even though this was for St. Mark Tuesday, but we got enough love we can share with the community. There was a family on Tuesday night that we were able to bless, and they were so thankful that they provided us with a thank you card. Can I read it to you? Yes. It says, sure, I, Rolanda Jones, am I pronouncing her name right? Rolanda. Um. I, Rolanda Jones, am truly grateful for my Thanksgiving box. Everything counts to the Jones family. Right. <laughs> And she wanted to personally thank Sister Threes, and she said Pastor Barry, Sister Aaron, and then all the volunteers. She said many, many, many blessings to you and your home with sincere thanks and appreciation. Thank you all, St. Mark Church, Baptist Church, Rolanda Jones and family. Amen. <laughs> so we see here that this did not go to ways that a family who may have been without now would be able to sit down this Thanksgiving and have a Thanksgiving Amen. meal. Amen. And so we just want to thank you, St. Mark, for that. There will be other initiatives down the road that we will be able to play part in as well. 
You know, every worship service we have a time of intercessory prayer where we come and stand on behalf of God's people to pray to God as it relates to whatever concerns, challenges, issues we may have. And so we want to encourage St. Mark. Let's continue to pray for each other. Amen. But as we do that, we want to remember these families, these families, they are uh, acquainted with Sister Chalandra Gasson. These three families, Sister Chalandra Gasson has a relationship with. Um, we want to keep the Chauvez family in prayer. Annette Chavez, I'm sorry, the Chavez family. Annette Chavez um, ended her battle with her condition that was brought on by COVID-related issues. So she went to be with the Lord this past week due to complications from COVID. And then a friend of Sister Gatson, Derek Summerfield, ended his battle with cancer this past week as well. Mm -hmm. So he went home to be with the Lord. And then there is a uh, family, the Garcia family, who's dealing with some unusual hardship right now. And so we want to keep them in prayer as we keep each other in prayer. How many of us know there's power in prayer? Yes, yes sir. Sure. There's power in prayer. And so we want to rely on that this morning as our musician plays softly. And as we bow our heads, close our eyes, and devote our hearts to prayer, let us stand in the gap this morning. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we are indeed grateful for this day and for another expression of your mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you for your blessings and thank you for your loving care. Thank you for getting us through this past week and for allowing us to be back together again. Lord, we thank you for the roof over our heads, the clothes on our backs. And for the food that you have placed on the table. Yes. Lord, we thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you for being in the right mind. Lord, we thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the saving power of your Son, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for making it all possible. Lord, we know as Christians our best days are not behind us, but they are still in front of us. As we study your word and we read how there is a great day awaiting us where the church will be united with, with Christ and how we will be in heaven and how everything will be made right. And so, Lord, we thank you for what we have to look forward to. We just thank you for all your blessings. Yes. Now, Father, we come now standing in the gap on behalf of your people. Yeah, yeah. We pray for every person who's under the sound of my weak voice right now. And we pray for the families that they represent. Lord, we just ask that continue to cover them and provide for them and then whatever particular concerns that they may have that you will minister as long as you can. Lord, we want to continue to pray for Pastor Madison as well as Sister Madison and their family. Thank you for keeping them and we pray that you will continue to do the same. Lord, we want to lift up the names, the families that family, the Summerfield family, and the Garcia family. We want to cover them right now in prayer. Now, 
Father, we ask that as we go further in the service that you would take us higher. As the choir comes, the praise team comes and sing, that you would take them higher. And then, Father, when it's time to preach the word, that you would bless. Pray, Lord, that you would speak through us and then to us that we might hear a word from all high. Lord, we ask that what we do will be to your glory. And we know if it's to your glory, it will be to our good. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen.
pigeon, yeah. or turtle dove. Yeah. Now we are to bring ourselves to the altar as living sacrifices. You see, St. Mark, it's one thing to be willing to die for the Lord, but it's a whole other thing to be willing to live for the Lord as a living Sacrifice to be a living sacrifice is personal mm -hmm. because Paul says we are to offer our bodies. Yeah, notice that we're to offer our bodies, it's personal. It's personal. How many of us in the house knows today that there are some things that we have to do our own selves? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 For example, when it comes to a marital relationship, the wife is not expected to be the wife and the husband. Come on. Right? Right? I wish I had some help for you. Right? Yeah. Watch out now. Yes. Just like the husband uh -huh. is not expected to be the husband and the wife. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on. Right. Sister Reese, right. the wife is only expected to be the wife. Yeah. And the husband is only expected to be the husband. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why? Because that is the responsibility that they have to each other. Oh, yeah. 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 All I'm trying to say is this, when it comes to our Christian relationship with God, yeah. when it comes to being dedicated to that relationship, we the only ones that can make that. Happen. That's right. Yeah. Now, St. Mark can offer all the ministries huh. that we want to offer. We can offer all the programs <laughs> there is to offer. Yes. But when it's all said and done, yeah. when the rubber meets the road, yeah. when it comes to being dedicated, yeah. dedicating ourselves to the relationship we have with God, that's something that we can only do our Pastor Beer can't do it for you. That's right. The deacons can't do it for you. Big Mama can't do it for you. See, when, when, when it comes to being dedicated in our Christian relationship with God, there are some things that you have to do yourself. There's no substitutes. There's no substitutes. But can I also suggest from the text that being a living sacrifice is not only personal, but it's perpetual. Because Paul says offer. And the word offer, St. Mark, has to do with the idea of placing yourself at the disposal All right. of someone else. Mm -hmm. As a once and for all commitment. Yeah. I, 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 I hope we don't miss that. Right. Not, not only are we to place ourselves at the disposal of God, but it's to be a once and for all yeah. commitment. Yeah. Unfortunately, St. Mark, there are some Christians, it depends on what day of the week it is, <laughs> if they're going to be on the altar. I, I wish I had some help here. It, it, it depends on what day of the week, if they are on, if, if, if the Sunday, okay, I might be on the altar. But Friday night, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, I ain't on the altar Friday night. No, Friday night is my night. I wish I had some help today. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and even as Christians, we still find ourselves getting on and off the altar. And Paul is saying that when we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, it is to be a once and for all commitment. And once we get on the altar, we are not to get off. Either you're going to be on it. You know what God told the church of me out of see in Revelation chapter 3? I wish you were hot or cold. I wish you was one or the other. But since you look warm. Since you look warm. I'm going to spew you out. By my mouth. There is a challenge in being a living sacrifice. 
All right. I'm, All I'm right. the first to admit. Come on. I'm the first to admit there, there are Sundays, St. Mark. I, I, I don't feel like Pastor Ben. There are Sundays, St. Mark. I come up against stuff. I, I, I want to lay the title Pastor Bear down and pick up, pick up Mr. Bear. Y'all not catching this. There, there are some days I'm out of character. Yeah, there are some days I'm not Pastor Bear, I'm Mr. Bear. Are uh, y'all with me today? It's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a challenge to be a living sacrifice. But I got to understand it's personal. There's some things I got to do myself, and I got to understand it's perpetual. I can't keep getting on and off. Either I'm going to be on it or I'm not. Let me move on because I promise not to be alone. But notice the cause to being a living sacrifice. Paul says in verse 1, the cause is in view of, the, of God's mercy. Yeah. Well, now, in the international, New International Version of the Bible, which is what I'm reading from, the word mercy is singular. Mm -hmm. But, Brother Turner, if you get out of the New American Standard Version of the Bible, you see the word is going to be mercies. That's right. So it, it, it's, instead of being singular, it's plural. Yeah. And, and that really is the better translation of the word mercy because really what Paul is trying to do as he wrote to the church of Rome is to emphasize the abundance of God's mercy. Yeah. 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 So it, instead of saying in view of God's mercy, he said in view of God's mercy. Yeah. 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 He's, he's trying to emphasize the abundance of God's mercy. Yeah. You remember last time I stood on last time I stood, we, 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 we talked about being a blessed believer. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody remember that? We talked about being a blessed believer. And, and we said that in, the reason why we're blessed believers is because when Paul wrote in chapter 3 of Romans, he talked about how there's none righteous. Yeah. Do I have any Bible students in the house? There, there are none righteous, not one. Right? See, it, it's, it's only when we place our faith in Jesus Christ that we are made acceptable mm -hmm. before God. Oh, yeah. Because oh, Paul, in a very last verse of Romans chapter 4, Brother mm -hmm. McDonald, said that Jesus was delivered over to death yeah. for our sins. Yes. And uh -huh. he was raised to life for our justification. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do y'all remember me saying that? Uh -huh. So to justify is to declare righteous. Right. Right. So we went from being not righteous, but because of Jesus, we are righteous. Right. And then Paul starts in Romans chapter 5 with the word therefore again. Right. Right. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. since we have been justified right. uh -huh, yeah. through faith, yeah. check this out. This is why we bless believers. We have peace with God. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. No longer are we on God's bad side. Y'all hear me saying that? Yeah. 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 No longer are we enemies of God. Yeah. Because outside of Jesus, we're enemies of God. We're at war with God. Yeah. But since we've been justified, we're no longer enemies of God. We're off of his bad side. Now we're on his good side. And if I'm glad to be on God's yeah. good side. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You can do a whole lot more when you're on God's good side. That's right. Yeah. And because we have peace with God, we can now enjoy the peace of God. Yes, sir. So Jesus came to give us eternal peace and also internal. Y'all right. remember me saying that? Yes, sir. Right. At least act like you remember. Yes, sir. Right. You remember me saying that? So we bless because we have peace with God, but also the pathway to God. Yeah, right. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. Anybody take notes on that last yes, sermon? Yes, sir. We have we have the pathway to God. Why? Because Jesus is the door. Yeah. That's right. It urges us into the very presence of God. And it's not his wrath that's waiting on us on the other side of the door, but it is his grace. Yeah. Yeah. So now, since we've been justified, we have not limited access, but we have unlimited access to God. All right. So it doesn't matter, St. Mark, what time of day it is that life comes in on you and pushes up on you. It doesn't matter what circumstances you may be going through. What troubles, trials, tribulation you may be dealing with, 
We have unlimited access to God. We can come to Him any time of the day. Whether it's early in the morning or we hours at night. With our problems, why? Because we have access. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. To God, but then we also have praise to God. Yeah. Right. Remember yeah. saying that? We can rejoice in the fact that our sufferings, our trials and our tribulations, are not working against us. All right. Oh, but they're working for us. I got a witness in the house today. So if I'm catching hell in front of me, behind me, on the side of me, yeah. Beneath me, it don't matter. I don't have to stress about it yeah. because God is working that thing out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to go off on the deep end because God is working that thing out. Yeah. I don't have to pick up a bottle and empty it out because God is working that thing out. Yeah. I have the assurance of knowing that sufferings and trials and tribulations are not working against me, yeah. but they are working for me. Then we concluded by saying we are blessed because of the outpouring of God's love in our hearts. We have the assurance of knowing that when we come to God, that when we leave, we're going to leave better than we can. Anybody going to have to know that? I may come to God toe up from the floor, but when I leave, I'm going to come forth as pure Somebody was listening to me last time. So Paul is saying, now fast forward back to chapter 12. Paul is saying, in light of all of that, yeah. in light of what all God has done for us, yeah. chapters 1 through 11, in light, in view of God's mercies, yeah. then we ought to be willing and motivated to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Yeah. We ought to be chomping. We ought to be jumping. Anybody jumping? We ought to be jumping to get on that altar. Yes, sir. In light of what God has done for us. Yes, sir. Now, St. Mark, St. Mark. If we're not thankful for what God has already done, yes, sir. why in the world should we expect Him to do anything else? Right, right, right. Well, we can better celebrate Thanksgiving if the Lord says the same. And if we're not thankful for what he's already done, put it yeah. before my head. Yeah. If we're not thankful for what he's already done, put some clothes on my back. If we're not thankful for what the Lord has already done, put some food on the table. If we can't be thankful for what he's already done, how can we have the mindset that he should do something else? I came to suggest this morning that the reason why, I ain't talking about unbelievers, I'm talking about Christians right now. I came to suggest this morning that the reason why some Christians can't go to the next level is because they're not thankful for the level that God has already elevated them to. You're not thankful for the car that you already have. Yeah. You're not thankful for the house that you already have. You're not thankful for the food that you already have. You're not thankful for the job you already have. And so how is God feel incentivized to bless you with more when you can't be thankful for what you do have? Come on. But I want you to know Barry. Come on. That I want you to know that Barry wants to level up. I don't know about anybody else, but I know about me. I want to level up. But I know if I'm going to level up, whether that be in my relationships, whether that be in my finances, whether that be in my health, whether that be in my career, if I'm going to level up, I need to thank God for the level. You know? So, God, I want to thank you for the food on my table. I want to thank you for the roof that's over my head. I want to thank you for the clothes that's on my back. And even for my hoopy. Lord, I want to thank you. See, you want to get past little to get to much. Uh -huh. You got to be first faithful with the little bit. And every time I get in my little hoopy, if it cranks up, thank you. If it gets me to where I'm going, thank you. If it gets me back to thank you. Don't be mad, Sam. Don't be hating on me. 
you. One Sunday, I pull up in here, and I'm on the elevator from my hood. Don't get me. Don't get me. Transformation, brother three, is not a one-time event. Yeah. Right, right, right. If you want to do some serious, serious study on what the Lord is doing in our life, do some studies on the doctrine of sanctification. You'll see what Paul is talking about here, but we don't have time for that. But let me just suffice to say that our transformation, our ultimate transformation, is not a one-time event. Right. But it's a process. Right. It's a process. And so we see here that if we want to have the mind of Christ, we got to do what Colossians 3 says. Mm -hmm. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yeah. If you and I, as I try to hasten to a close, want to have the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. we got to let the word of Christ That's right. dwell in us. That's right. All right. Richard, I like what Darius Daniels, a prolific preacher. If you ever get a chance, YouTube him, prolific preacher. I like what he said once before. Saint Mark, he says, we don't receive the word when we hear it. We receive the word when we apply it. That's it. That's See, right now, y'all can leave today. Y'all may, y'all may not. Y'all can leave today and say, well, Pastor Barry brought a, a powerful word. He had a great word. But, man, what a word. But it don't mean nothing. Yeah. You heard it. Yeah. Yeah. But did you apply it? Come on, that's that's it. Right. We receive the word not when we hear it. Uh -huh. We receive the word when we apply it. And all I'm trying to say is the more we apply the word of Christ, the more radical the transformation would be. That's right. I think that's worth repeating. Yes, the more we apply the word of Christ, uh -huh. the more radical our transformation will be. You're right, the number three. Can I repeat it again? Yeah. The more 
more we apply yeah. the word of Christ, the more radical yeah. our transformation yeah. will be. Anybody want a radical transformation yeah. in your marriage? You want a radical transformation in your family? You want a radical transformation in your finances, in your career, in our community, in our schools, in our government? Well, the more we apply the word of Christ, the more radical the transformation will be. I want to be transformed. But if I want to have the mind of Christ, I got to let the word of Christ Richly dwell yeah. in me. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you give God a hand? Clap? Yeah. The doors of the church have been open for more than 2,000 years. And if there's anyone here today who has not accepted Christ and you want to, we invite you to come right now. Perhaps there's someone online and you have not accepted Christ. You can do so even right now. The Bible is very simple on how that can happen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. You can be saved right in your living room. You can be saved right in your family room. You can be saved in your kitchen just by receiving Christ as your Savior, as your Lord. And if you've made that decision, if you ask if you let us know. You can go on our website, St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church, St. Mark Dallas Dallas, and you can connect with us there. Give us a chance to connect with you. Is there anyone here today?
be beneficial to your walk with the Lord and that you have a good Thanksgiving. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for these gifts. We pray your blessing upon the gifts as well as the giver of the gifts. Lord, we pray that your word has made sense. Now, Lord, we ask that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. We pray that you would keep us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Amen.